when it comes to choosing the location for this listing, how did you come to the conclusion of going to New York? Why not Hong Kong, closest to your biggest market? Why not Paris? Well, I, I think this is a really exciting moment for us uh, because going public become a, almost a natural step after we have seen the strong growth in the past several years. And the global luxury industry has been very resilient even during the pandemic. Uh, and uh, uh, why, why uh, New York? I mean, New York is not only uh, the, the financial hub globally, but also one of the fashion capital. Uh, we do really see a lot of potentials in uh, our group in North America plus Asia. You know, currently only 14% of the revenue coming out of Asia uh, and the, the rest of the 86% uh, uh, of the revenue for Levant Group is coming from major uh, Europe, but, uh, you know, also including uh, U.S., North America. We have a strong commitment in uh, keeping developing our business in North America, including the uh, retail footprint and the online business, e-commerce, etc. So we feel very exciting. And also, I mean, Prima Mira is a very important partner. When we met each other, we share a lot of insights of the consumer segment. They have this uh, spec vehicle in New York a Stock Exchange, which become naturally for us to like, go through the whole transaction. We saw Goldman Sachs recently downgrade its outlook when it comes to the luxury sector, and a lot of that was due to uh, the COVID restrictions and, and the closed borders that we continue to see for China, which remains the broader luxury sector's biggest market. Can you tell us about the impact of COVID-19 on your brand in China, and do you expect to see that uh, you know, revenge dressing that we saw as many markets came out of the first round of lockdowns? Yeah, sure. I mean, China is still a very small portion of the business. Uh, like I said, only 14% of it uh, coming uh, from China, uh, of the revenue of the group. Uh, group. Uh, now we are keep developing a lot of a retail foot spring, uh, foot footprint in, uh, in China. Uh, and because of the restriction on the traveling, now a lot of people have to shop in domestically. Uh, so that's why uh, we also drive not only in the retail uh, opening in, uh, in, in Asia, but we also want to explore more digitalization through online or e-commerce channels, which is quite important as well. But this not only happened in China, I mean, it also happened in, for example, the other Asian market like Japan. We have a very unique strategic, uh, strategic uh, alliance group, including, for example, Ituchu from Japan. They are helping us to explore our uh, retail uh, presence and also a lot of the wholesale accounts in Japan okay. and also the same right. for, for North America. So, yeah. uh, Joanne, this uh, transaction will value the company at about one and a half billion dollars. You're raising about five hundred forty four million dollars. So uh, what are you going to do with it? Where do you see the best opportunities? But specifically acquisitions, uh, what are you going to do? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, we will use part of the proceeds to really invest, uh, keep investing into current portfolio, like uh, do more marketing campaigns or retail opening, uh, online business digitalization, a lot of things. We still have to improve our operational cap uh, uh, capability and capacity. Uh, but we are still also uh, screening new acquisitions, uh, like uh, new brands. And uh, with some of the proceeds, we want to invest into uh, one incubator project including, you know, support those growing brands or designer brands who has a good, uh, you know, digitalization uh, capability, technology or sustainable uh, supply chain, mm -hmm. uh, et cetera. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is a, it, even for retailers, uh, luxury retailers, um, th in some ways, this is a tough time. I remember what, how many years ago now that, that, that Barney's went bankrupt, right? And they had expanded a bit in New York and into Japan. So. Do you see any, if you can't give us any names, any, any kind of retailer, any part of the world where you might say, you, rather than doing an incubator, which you're going to do, just, just pick up some good bargains. Where, where, where do you see yourself doing that? I mean, our retail stores currently still have a very limited footprint uh, due to, you know, we are still young um, group uh, with uh, like four years old. Uh, 
our uh, numbers of the stores in the States, for example, using Alaza, uh, Lavan as an example, is below 10. So we still have a lot of room to open in the, the best shopping mall, best location. And those are low-hanging uh, low uh, uh, fruits for us to really scale our business. Uh, and uh, for example, Japan, we are going to open one stores in Ginza. This is the first one that after several years of coming back to Japan market, those best places still a very good location for us to really grab the low hanging fruit. How much exposure do you have to the Russian market? Well, we don't have a, a, like a retail or online business in Russia. So I guess so that's not a that's that's not a big loss. But what we won't uh, because we don't have uh, you know retail stores or or online business in Russia. So uh, n knowing that, um, in terms of you know, we're, there's a question about your uh, creative director, uh, Bruno Sialielli, if he's going to stay on and more broadly. Um, you know, the markets keep changing. Um, people talk about affordable luxury. There's generational changes. Are you going to have different kinds of brands for, for these different groups? Where do you think your sweet spot is right now? Yeah, I mean, creativity is always the most the core value of uh, luxury uh, brands. So, but I mean, the format is keep involving themselves. Sometimes uh, we have a big name for one big brand. Sometimes we have uh, so-called genius programs, like uh, several designers in the studio for, for the brands to add a lot of uh, newest. For us to really incubate young talent is our key, uh, you know, uh, task. In Milan, we have our creative lab that we have uh, uh, more than 10 young red, uh, designers registered in that lab, and uh, we do collab uh, capsules, collaborations mm -hmm. with them. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, in, in Shanghai, for example, we also have a virtual okay. creative lab. Yeah, yeah. Okay, just really quickly, a quick mm -hmm. follow-up. So is, uh, is Bruno Salgale going to stay on? Just quick answer. Yeah, I mean, he, yes, he, he gives a lot of news. Uh, by attract a young generation. Okay. 